What's up guys, we're back with another educational video and this week we're talking about stretching. Can it increase muscle mass? But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment. Follow the algorithm. So a new study got published looking at the effects of either resistance training on the calf muscles or hardcore stretching on the calf muscles. And you'll see what I mean by hardcore. But before we talk about the study, let's talk about some former research. We know that full range of motion training tends to induce better muscular development than partial range of motion when we're talking about training in the non-stretch position partially. So like, for example, high squats, that sort of thing. We know that deep full range of motion movements tend to produce better hypertrophy. Now we also know that partial range of motion in the stretched position produces just as good of hypertrophy as full range of motion. So what that means, for example, is if you're doing partials in the bottom of a squat where you're in the stretched position, for example, so instead of doing a partial at the top, you're doing a partial at the bottom where you're just going part the way up and then going all the way back down. Those are really hard, but those tend to produce as much hypertrophy as full range of motion. Now, that actually suggests that maybe the stretch component has something to do with hypertrophy. And there is some data suggesting that like longer stretching periods may induce hypertrophy. So there were three groups, a control group that didn't train at all, one group that did traditional calf training where they did like five sets of 10 to 12 reps three times per week on calves, took about 15 minutes per session, and then they had a group that basically they had them sit in a chair and then extend their leg and put it into a device that would stretch their calf. And they told them to go to like a seven or eight on the pain scale for stretch. They would keep it in that position and they would hold it there for an hour and they had them do that seven days a week. What they found was basically that the stretch training was just as good as the traditional weight training for pretty much every measurement. So muscle mass, uh, flexibility, strength, all those things were improved to the same extent in both groups compared to the control group. It looks like holding these muscles in a stretch position is just as good at inducing hypertrophy as traditional strength training. Now, before you get real gung-ho about this study, it's important to mention it was just in the calf muscles and you're talking about seven hours per week of really intense stretching that's pretty painful. If you're talking about seven, out of, seven or eight out of 10, that's pretty painful compared to 45 minutes per week of just traditional training for the calves. So what I would say is you have to stretch for a really long period of time at a very high pain threshold to get the same benefits as just doing 45 minutes of resistance training. So to me, I would say the resistance training is better and the resistance training group not only got the same lean mass and strength increases, they had just as good of an improvement in flexibility as the stretch group. So I don't know about y'all, but I'm probably not cutting out my calf work and buying one of these devices based on this study. Now, Perhaps it has uses for, I don't know, people who wanna like scroll their phone or like do work while they're having their calf stretched. I, I don't know. Perhaps there's a benefit there. Maybe some people would say, well, I have bad calves. Maybe I could just keep them in a stretch position while I'm doing work or something like that in addition to my resistance training. But keep in mind, I'm not sure if these are gonna be additive effects. Now, the other thing that's important to mention is they did say that these were recreationally active people, that doesn't necessarily mean that they do strength training regularly. So it is possible that this might have also been an effect of them being really new to the stimulus. And a lot of times when people are new to stimulus, if they're new to resistance training, for example, sometimes really low volume, like one set a week on a muscle is just as good as like three, five or 10 sets on a muscle for muscle growth for new trainers because just doing anything is so powerful. So I'm not saying that's what happened here, but it is a possible limitation. All right, guys, if you're looking for evidence-based training, make sure you check out the BioLane Workout Builder. We take all the messy guesswork out of the reps and sets to do, as well as 
how intense you should make each set on either an RPE scale or as a percentage of your one rep max, but we give you the flexibility to choose exercises that you have access to depending on your gym or that you prefer. So it is great structured flexibility. Thousands of people use it, love it. So make sure you click the link in the description and sign up.